Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows. In today's episode we're going to be looking into why we don't get spark and the reasons why. Generally these reasons are quite simple but either it can be a dead man's hand or cable has stretched, the micro switch is either not connecting or it's dirty, the spark plug can be broken or things like that. These are the main reasons. The other reason can be is that the coil is actually broken down and that's not working anymore and they're a sealed unit and you can't, you can't repair them. Now I'm going to show you a very simple way of how to test for these using a multimeter. I'm not overly um, okay with these but I have self-taught myself by watching other videos bits and pieces on how to, how to test for a coil. So I want to show you how I test for a coil and that way you can tell that if you've got um, a lawnmower that isn't sparking or it is sparking but will not start the engine there may be a reason why and the core could be just below the resistance marking to give you a decent enough spark to start your engine. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mows, hit your subscribe button, not whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told when I've done a video or two, I'm on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's check some coils. Okay, so here I have a very, very cheap um, multimeter, which I purchased off of eBay. Uh, this cost me around about nine pounds, uh, no more than that. Don't make it any more complicated than what it needs to be. Simply choose a very, very cheap one, which will do the job. You get two leads of these. Your red one goes into your, into your center comms lead, and then your black lead will go over to the right-hand side. Just push that into place, and that's it set up. Now, the first thing you wanna do is turn your machine, your, uh, your device, all the way down to the red, um, resistance tab and just simply by pushing the two tabs together you'll hear a beep noise and that means you have good continuity that's the first thing you need to do next thing to do is push this over to the um, green 20k marker just on the um, on the side here make sure it's at that, that marker and that way we've set up ready to do the testing on the coils so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put this multimeter up hopefully somewhere where you're going to be able to see it And now that's in place, we're now just going to start to test some coils. Now, I have an abundance of coils here. Literally, I have um, an abundance of them. The first coil we're going to test, this one here has come off of a Briggs & Stratton. And all you need to do is get your red, your red cable and put that into the HT lead boot. Have a little bit of a scratch, okay, and then hold it into place and then get your, your, black, your black wire terminal and then put it onto the side of a coil just here and all we need to do is just touch it down you'll see here we have a reading of one touch it down there and we have a reading of six two two that means that's a good coil okay anything over sort of 2.5 is a good is a good coil so six two two is good touch it over the other side six two three six two two and the last test is on the dead man's handle terminal And we're going to be reading 622 again. So that coil is absolutely fantastic and there's nothing wrong with that coil. I'll go through a selection. This one here is off of a slightly older Briggs & Stratton flathead 3.5 Classic. It's got a little tiny nick just in the um, HTD cable there. Um, let's just put this inside. Again into the HTD boot. And we've got a reading here of 1 on the meter. Touch it down. 2.65, that's a good coil. It's a little bit low, but it's still good. 2.6, that's another good coil. And again, on the dead man's handle terminal. 2.65, so that again is another good coil. This one here, <coughs> I believe it came off of an old Honda. I believe. Again, put it inside, make sure it makes a good connection, which it has. We've got a reading of one on the meter. And again, just touch this terminal. Nothing there. Have a scratch. Make sure you've got a good connection. Nothing there. Nothing there. And onto the dead man's handle terminal. Nothing there. This call is actually dead. That call is no good for anything at all. I have another call here, again, off of this off of Briggs & Stratton again. HTLE boot onto a terminal. Nothing on this one either. This call is actually dead. This one come off a lawnmower today. Over the other side. 
dead onto a terminal dead nothing there at all so those, we've got two coils so far out of four that are dead this one's come off an sv150 engine which is like a chinese style engine commonly found on uh, mount fields onto HTL boot this hasn't actually got a boot itself it's got the uh, the bare terminal showing onto a terminal onto there six point uh, six six three onto the other side six six three good readings onto a terminal six six three so these that again is a fantastic call so out of this so far we've got that calls bad and that calls bad they can be thrown straight into the bin you can keep the HTL boots take them off a bit of hot water but these three calls here are all good coils now this can be done very simply by um, just removing the pull cord assembly off the top of a lawnmower. You don't need to take the coils off. You can literally just leave the um, coils on, and, but all you have to do is make sure you remove the cable that runs from the dead man's handle micro switch to this point here. Just take that, that cable off to do the test. And then again, all you have to do, this is the dead one I believe, is just into the HTD boot, touch the terminal, Nothing at all. That one's dead. Okay. So just to reiterate, on, on a good one, which I believe this one to be good, onto the boot, make a connection, good coil, good coil, good coil. Simple and easy. Okay, so there you have it. That's how easy it really, really is. Anything over about 2.5 up to around about 5 or 6 is a good coil. Anything under that, or if the coil is actually giving you a really weird reading where it's going up and down, up and down, up and down um, into the mega ohms, then the coil is no good and that coil should then be disregarded. It's very, very simply done and can be done with the coil left on the engine as long as you remove that dead man's handle cable wire off of a terminal. You can then test that coil whilst it is situ on top of the engine. I hope you found this um, video informative. If you did, give a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel and whack the old bell that way you'll be told one done a video or two of them on my saturday night wiki live stream which starts at 6 30 pm uk time i look forward to the next episode of mixed Mars very very soon but until then people don't forget more importantly take her easy